Now, what about stage threes? Talk about some controversy, and it'll be interesting to see if we all agree on how we would treat certain patient populations in stage three. You know, Zev, you alluded to the IDEA study. Can you set the context for us? Tell us a little bit about what that was and what we saw, and has it changed? Practice? Well, so we all know IDEA was this incredible collaboration amongst many groups all over the world that really centered on the question of three versus six, and it was it was all designed to be non-inferior. So, so obviously, conceptually, can you get away with three months instead of six months? And the big advantage thereof is certainly less peripheral neuropathy. Um, and really a, an incredible collaboration that uh, they deserve a lot of credit for, for putting this whole thing together. Um, as with any study of that size, uh, it's not, it's not going to be clean. There's going to be there's going to be controversy. There's going to be different groups that found one thing, um, which we, we saw uh, when the primary results have been pr published now. But um, it really is, is I think, a, a, an important addition to clinicians' use of adjuvant chemotherapy, particularly in the low-risk, so-called low-risk stage 3 patients, in my opinion. Um, that's where I, I, I feel like IDEA has given us some very practice-changing uh, data sets with, to build on. So are, are you, for your low-risk patients, are you changing your length of treatment? And are you changing your treatment? Tell us a little bit about Folfox versus KBOX. So, uh, and you know, this is where obviously you, you look at the data and you see that uh, in the in the KPOX group, certainly there is the suggestion by and large that three months is as good as six months, whereas in the full Fox cohorts, it's less clear. But when you pull it all together, of course, it didn't quite meet statistical significance. Um, I think that I have changed my practice since this results have been uh, presented in the low risk stage three patient population, N1 disease in particular. I have now uh, used KPOX for three months in those patients who have N1 disease. And before, prior to this being data published, I was giving them six months of either Folfox or KPOX. I am not sure, entirely not sure, what to do if they are inclined to get Folfox. And, and should we now, because they have one positive lymph node or two positive lymph nodes, does that mean we should not give them Folfox for three months? The data would suggest it's, it's, it, it did not meet its criteria for being non-inferior, but it's, it's a bit, it's still a puzzle to me of why that is. Yeah. Dirk, what's well, your vote? Yeah, well, I would, yeah, more or less agree. However, if you look to the totality of data we have been, let's say, obtaining with uh, Cape Cytobine in adjuvant setting, be it in rectal cancer versus five of you in rectal cancer, be it in breast cancer, be it in all colon cancer uh, trials, I think it looks like that Cape Cytobine a single agent also is a bit more efficacious than infusional 5-FU. And therefore, I would say I'm not so surprised that also this non-inferiority combined analysis shows that uh, Zelox seems to be a bit better, doing better and showing a clearer non-inferiority than uh, Folfox does. And in fact, as it's also more convenient, and um, since patients don't need to have a porticat system uh, implanted for three month treatment, etc., uh, well, I need to treat nearly 100% of my patient with KPOX in this situation. And for the low risk, are you doing three months? Yeah, in any case. And I what think what we have learned overall from this idea uh, collaboration is that the risk, the differences in risk are really not high. Yeah, even in the high risk, so-called high risk population, it's 10% yeah. relapse-free survival or disease-free survival, not more. Yeah, so which okay, may then translate into a survival again, and therefore I would not play around with the high risks. But it's not, we are not a world apart in treatment versus no treatment, and we are at least, and clearly not half a world apart in three months versus six months treatment. So therefore, whatever we do, we can play with dose intensity. Yeah? Also, if patients do develop neuropathy, after three months, and they are deemed candidates for six month treatment. I feel much safer now in saying after three months, okay, we take oxaliplatin off, we just continue with five of you, or we only limit the, the treatment to 4.5 months or whatever, yeah? But say, differences are not that great, we can play around, we can adapt this to the patient's need, and always have the not to harm law as 
clearest priority in adjuvant treatment. So I'm going to ask you a question I wasn't, I wasn't preparing you to answer. Now, we, we'll give a little asterisk prepared? because it's a European question. Um, what dose of capecitabine, what schedule of capecitabine do you use for your patients? Well, um, maybe in, in combination treatment, we use, of course, the two grams per day. And also in single agent, I would continue with the two grams per day. I would, if I do start with K-box, I would not re-escalate these two to 2.5 grams per day um, if I skip oxaliplatin. And what schedule, what break do you give? Well, one week. One week, so you do one week on, one week off? No, two weeks on, two one weeks week on, off. Two weeks on, one yeah. week off, so, so that's, traditional. Well, that's the standard traditional, traditional treatment. Well, yeah, we, we, we nearly never use 2.5 grams, maybe, maybe wrong, uh, but uh, in combination we use two grams, of course, and then if we discontinue oxaliplatin, we continue also with two I'm, grams. And I'm gonna ask Zev really quick, what's your CAPE dose? A little less. <laughs> <laughs> and, um, we rounded down sometimes as opposed to rounding it up. But it, and, and we've known for some time that that's the way it is with Cape Side. I mean, this on the other side of the Atlantic. But, um, you know, the really interesting question that Dirk brought up, actually, in which I've actually faced and since this idea trial has come up, is what about continuing the for, for a pyrimidine for, six, for an additional three months? Meaning that wasn't obviously questioned in this, that wasn't a topic of discussion in the study, but to, I have patients that, you know, they do great on Capox for six months, uh, three months, and then they say, well, let's just continue the Capecitabine. I'm, you know, I'm a little worried. I have two lymph nodes. How do you know, doctor? My, one of those two lymph nodes. So, you know, I actually struggle with that because they're not having any toxicity. The neuropathy, well, I'm not going to continue the oxyplatin. I'm curious what others would say about that sort of situation. There's no data, but would we continue another three months of uh, Cape Cytobine alone in such a patient? Makes me feel better about stopping it. That's for sure. Well, I already, I already voted, for, uh, opted for, and say that's that's a fair option. We 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 can now. We learned a bit. I think that's a big learning of idea. We learned a bit better about prognosis under several conditions in stage three with these treatment modifications. Yeah, and we, we can more precisely say what is really the gain here in this situation. But we have to be careful in the US with the yes. capcitabine. We exactly. always have seen in any clinical trial conducted in Europe mm -hmm. or in the US, we have more toxicity. Yeah. And um, your question of dosing yes. is appropriate because yes. that's what we struggle. Right. Now in LA with my Hispanic patient population, they have a hard time with capecitabine. So, um, you know, and then the question raises, when I have to go so low, is it still better? Right. Because the question of dose intensity comes of course in. So I don't think we have the final answer, but for the low risk, three months of z or three months of Folfox, which is still in the guidelines, yeah. uh, is appropriate. But I agree with Dirk. I think one of the major lessons from IDEA is even when it's high risk, you can now more comfortably stop oxaliplatin when we reach toxicity. The benefit is single digits at all, you know. Now, interesting data show when you do six months, Folfox is better than Zilox. So it's not a clear cut, yes and go and good, bad. So there are still things to learn how we really um, treat the patient the best. But also, uh, we discussed it a little bit before, I think with the IDEA trial, I was always convinced the N2 status is the most prognostic, and it's wrong. Yeah. It's T4, mm -hmm. which looks, I look now at the TNM much closer than I did before. I looked for the T2, and that was for me it, and now it is different. So I think this was a very, very important trial for a lot of purposes, and it will benefit the patients on a global level. Yeah, and a lot more is still to come out of it. Yeah, absolutely. Oh, yes, yes. I, I think the, the cooperative U.S. trials are having an, an extensive translational research program build up. We are working with the Italian group, with Dr. Soprero, on a molecular characterization. So I think there will be a lot of, like PTAC, you yes. know, uh, negative trials are still feeding into classification and better understanding of the tumor heterogeneity just heard yesterday. So I think there are a lot of things to learn and to come out of these large trials.